Hello and welcome to MB Tech. My name is Matthew Bingham and today we're going to be going over the more of the infrastructure side of the networking and also the Raspberry Pi that is used as the Unify controller. Um, so that part is going to be right here that I'm highlighting or circling uh, with a laser pointer. Uh, so we'll have the Raspberry Pi as well as the Unify controller. Um, and that's the part that we'll go over right now. Okay, we're going to be logging into the Unify controller. As I mentioned, this is actually running on a Raspberry Pi. And I'll be going over those steps that you need to follow to install the controller on the Raspberry Pi. But I just wanted to show you one that's already set up. This is the one that I'm currently using in my network setup. And from here, you can get some uh, information on how it's set up on my network. You can set yours up differently, obviously, for the different types of equipment that you do have. So first, we're going to log in. And this is basically the uh, traffic uh, overview of the uh, system that you can see. You know, this is basically just the traffic, how many client devices. I got a total of 61 devices that are logged in there. Um, here's a topology. This is kind of interesting to kind of look at. I mean, I've got a lot of devices, so it's kind of complex. Um, and then the most important part here is the unified devices themselves. Um, so in here, we've got all the different uh, types of Unify equipment that I have throughout the house. I've got some access points. Um, I've got some uh, switches as well as the uh, Flex Mini, which is just a really small work group hub uh, that's in there. I have also have the uh, uh, gateway uh, on there as well. Uh, so I've got quite a bit of uh, Unify equipment. I really like it. It's been very stable and worked very well. Uh, one thing I will show you, um, since once we install the new one, it probably will not have all these updates, but we can show here how easy it is to actually upgrade uh, your network. So, for instance, let's go to the uh, upstairs. We've got a access point, and we're going to say it says update available. So you just click on that, and it says, are you sure you want to upgrade your Skynet from this version to that version? We're going to confirm it. So it's actually updating it, and you can see here that it's updating it as well. Um, it basically will download that. As I said, it is updating. As you can see here, the uh, access point has been uh, updated and now says the firmware is up to date. And it's only been up for 49 seconds. So it was uh, pretty quick. It doesn't take too, too long. And then basically you'd have to do it for all these other ones. There's multiple ways that you can do your updates. Um, I do kind of a top-down approach. And that's just the way that I have it set up for my, my Bing Lab and throughout my home network. Um, and basically I go from, you know, upstairs access points to up, upstairs switches to uh, second floor, you know, access point to second uh, floor switches down to the basement and the basement switches. And then last but not least, I do the USG last. Um, I know other people do it the other way as well. So it's really whatever your preference is for that. But uh, that's how I do that. Um, so the, some of the most important things about your uh, gateway and that is in the settings make sure that you go into your uh, system and make sure that in maintenance that you are actually doing backups. Um, usually it's automatic, but you really need to check this to make sure you have it. And then here are all your available backups. You can see it's been backed up at 7 p.m. every single night. Um, you can set that time to whatever you'd like. It'll keep the last five. Um, and from there, what I normally do is if I'm messing around with anything, I always go here real quick and I say download. And now it's downloaded that auto backup. So I feel pretty good about it. Um, there is the auto backup of my controller with all of the settings and stuff like that. Um, obviously, you want to set it up on the same IP address and stuff like that that you had currently. Uh, so that's one of the biggest features that I can think of that you need to make sure you have is the backup. Um, Obviously, I've got different uh, Wi-Fi networks set up. Um, I've got different networks with different VLANs, some for Proxmox, some for, you know, Home Lab. I've got actually another Proxmox 2, so I can have two different uh, VLANs on there. And then I've got my uh, Internet of Things network for stuff that I do not want to touch my network, uh, such as Google, as well as uh, Amazon devices. Um, then I've got my regular uh, LAN uh, as well um, for the Internet. Basically, it just goes out through the um, USG um, and then connects to my provider for my Internet. And uh, that's where I get uh, that information from. Uh, one thing that you do want to make sure is that you go in here and I think uh, your ISP capabilities. If you're getting like 100 meg from your service, you should set that to 100, 100 
uh, megabits if you got a gig, set it to a gig, uh, whatever your speed limits are, you want to make sure that's set up. That, that's just so you can get more accurate information uh, when you come to your dashboard here. Um, you can see your amount of, uh, uh, you know, up and down uh, speeds and stuff like that. You want to make sure that's that's more accurate. Um, you know, there's your client uh, devices as well as your traffic stats, uh, threat management, um, pretty standard stuff uh, on these systems. Uh, Wi-Fi Insights is kind of interesting. And that's pretty much it. Um, so we've backed that up. I'm going to show you how to install the uh, controller software on a Raspberry Pi. It's a Pi 3 uh, Plus, I believe, um, from there. And then uh, we'll go through the setups for that. Um, there's actually a really good step-by-step -step guide on uh, the Unify controller uh, site. So that is a good place to check uh, for the setups that I, I'm going to go through. I'm not going to write it up because I think they did a great job here. Um, so basically, first thing we want to do is we need to get our Raspberry Pi set up. Um, so we need to go to our operating systems. And as you can see, there's actually a new one that just came out. It's Bullseye. Um, so we're going to be uh, doing this install on the latest and greatest uh, Raspberry Pi uh, with a Bullseye on there. Just came out October 30th. So you're going to need to download, and I recommend using the light because you really don't need a desktop and stuff like that. You don't want resources being used on your uh, graphic user interfaces. So we will be going with the Raspberry Pi light. Uh, you're just going to need to download it uh, unless you're using a torrent. You can do that as well, but I'm just doing a regular download. And uh, once that gets downloaded, uh, we'll be able to use the uh, imaging tool, um, which you can get from the Raspberry Pi site as well. Uh, here it's basically choose your OS. So we're going to go in here and we are going to say custom. And from that custom, we're going to check our downloads. And let's see. 1030 that's the one we want bullseye so we've got that selected choose our sd card we've plugged in a uh, sd card uh, 16 gig um and then we're going to write and as long as this data will be erased and we're saying yes to that um writing process takes a little bit of time so i will fast forward through this um, that's pretty much all you need to do for that part of the uh, imaging next i'll show you what file you need to create so you can ssh directly in Okay, now it's going through the verify. Uh, just checking to make sure everything's correct on there. And then once this completes, we'll actually create a uh, SSH file uh, on that boot partition so that you can actually log in using SSH and PuTTY. Um, and then we can go in and do the update of the OS and make sure that it's running the latest and greatest. And then after that's done, we'll go through the setup of the uh, system for the Unify controller. Okay, looks like it has completed. Um, so it's been transferred over to the uh, SD card. Uh, now we just want to replug it in and make sure that we can get to the boot partition. We can say continue here. That's fine. Close this out. And then now what we want to do is we want to go to the uh, boot partition on that E drive, uh, which is right here. Basically, this is the uh, imager decompressed all the files onto the SSD card. And this is the boot directory here. We just need to create a file. And that file is just a text document and it's called SSH. Make sure there's no extension and that it's just a regular plain old SSH file with no text or anything in it. Uh, once that's done, you can remove the SSD, uh, the SD card. Once you've completed creating the SSH, file uh, you can remove the sd card and install it into your raspberry pi and power it up okay we can go to our existing unified network to determine what the ip address of the system is and it's this system right here uh it is 231 what we want to do is we're going to want to SSH into the raspberry pi so we'll put the ip address that we found previously into putty and SSH into the box. Uh, once SSH in, it's just going to be Pi and then Raspberry. First thing I like to do is change that password. Just do a PASSWD and then uh, put in uh, Raspberry and then you put in the password that you want it to be. OK, 
Okay, password's been changed successfully. So I'm gonna clear the screen here real quick. Uh, what we wanna do now is actually do a quick, uh, what I call upgrade and update. You wanna make sure it's running the latest and greatest. So let's do apt uh, get update pi. So I'm logged in as the pi user, so I need to sudo to get root to run that command. Um, it does look like the rop repository has been changed from unstable to stable uh, since that release, and we're going to be running Bullseye, which is the latest uh, that we have for there. Um, after that's done, we're just going to do, do an upgrade, and we're going to say yes to this. Um, it's just going to upgrade 14 packages. Okay, the update is completed. Um, now we're just going to reboot the system. So again, sudo reboot. Yeah, let's try logging back in. So it's going to restart session. Remember, it's pi and your new password. Quick clear. Okay, next we're going to want to run that those same two commands we did earlier uh, after it rebooted just to make sure there's nothing new. There shouldn't be, but let's just verify. Everything looks good. So we are all up to date with the latest and greatest, uh, the bullseye that just came out recently um, for the Raspberry Pi. And then now we'll be installing the Unify controller on that box. Um, so what we need to do now is we need to go to about a step-by-step -step tutorial um, on their site. Uh, we've already done this SSH'd in. Uh, now we just need to do uh, only the Unify controller. Um, we, we'll be going over Pi Hole, but we'll do that a little bit later. You can actually do both of them at once. Um, but I want to do just the uh, uh, Unify controller itself. So we'll run this command here. And this will take some time. So uh, once that uh, goes through, we'll let that uh, run. And there's the command. And we'll let this do its thing. Um, it's letting us know that uh, it's going to be running the 6.043. Uh, or it can run the 6.454. Uh, we're going to be running the actual 6454 version. And it wants us to change the password. And it's going to start installing the system. Um, this does take a little bit of time, so I will fast forward through all of this. Um, to once it's finished and uh, we will get back then it's downloading the package list once the system uh, is finished installing it does a reboot okay our system should be done we're going to just restart this session and once again it's going to be pi and it's going to be our new password okay we're logged in now once again, we're just going to clear the screen. We're going to do a uname dash a. We are running the October 6th kernel. Um, once again, we can run that quick uh, command just to verify that there's no updates and no upgrades. Okay, we are good to go. Everything has been updated to the latest and greatest. We're running the bullseye and we're running the latest uh, regular uh, stable release of uh, Unify uh, controller. On the system. Uh, next, what I like to do is I like to install the uh, exporter for Prometheus. Uh, basically, this allows us to monitor the system using Grafana stuff like that further down the road. Um, but I always install some of my systems just so that I have it on there, and then we'll verify that that's working properly. Um, then we'll go in and I'll show you the actual web interface GUI to the uh, uh, controller and uh, give you some different options on there. So let's uh, get the uh, exporter on there and then we can verify that it seems to be working so if we go to the uh, prometheus github uh, we can see that it has its latest 10 2021 uh, release of the node exporter um, and the one that we're going to need is for the actual arm uh, so we need to go down here and look for there's netbsd linux we just need the linux arm 6. Um, so right here's the one that we need uh, we're just going to copy that link Copy the link address. We're going to go back to our system here. And then we're just going to do a uh, wget. And it's downloading it. Okay, our node exporter is now on, on uh, been downloaded to the system. It is just a, a gzip file. Now we need to uh, tar untar the uh, file. So we'll do a tar 
dot xvf node exporter. And that just basically uh, unzipped all those files that we had there. And now we're going to change in uh, into the uh, node exporter. And we're going to change into that directory. Do a quick list. And we notice that there's a license to the node exporter and the notice. From here, what we want to do is actually uh, sudo copy the node exporter. And we want to put that into the user local bin. So that's been copied. We want to make that file executable. We're going to add a user node exporter to the system. We're also going to be making a directory of uh, our lib node exporter. And we're going to change ownership. Clear that up. Next, we need to create a systemd file. Next, we need to create a uh, systemd file for that service to start. We're going to reload the system daemon. We're going to enable the service. And we're going to start the service. Uh, real quick here, we can also do a status. And it looks like it's active and been running as of sec seven seconds ago. So everything looks like it's running properly for the uh, node exporter. To verify that our node exporter is working properly, we can uh, do a curl command on the local host. And we got a whole bunch of metrics, so that looks good. Um, we also can go out to uh, a web browser and type in HTTP, our IP address. And 9100, and we can see that we got the node exporter, then metrics. So basically the same information we got from the curl local. So all this stuff is here ready to go. Um, and now what we can do is further in, we can actually use uh, the Prometheus itself to connect to this and scrape this information so that we have that for our Grafana graphs. But I like to install this uh, prior, that way it's there and it's ready and available uh, for when we are ready to get stuff put into Grafana. Um, so that's it for Prometheus. Um, I'll put the link in as well for uh, the steps that need to be taken uh, for that. Once again, someone's done some really good documentation. So I'll put that information in there. Um, now we can actually go to the IP address of the system. Uh, it's going to be HTTPS. Uh, 192.168.1.231. And it's going to be 8443. And when we do that, it's got a self-signed certificate. So we'll go to advance and say proceed. And as you can see, we are logged in to the new Unify controller. We can either set up a new one or we can actually restore from the backup. That's why I said it's very important to do backups and stuff like that. So um, if I were to put this one into my production, I've already got one that's running in production fine. I don't have any issues. But if I wanted to put this one into production, all I'd have to do is say restore setup from backup. And then I'll do it alternatively. You can upload uh, back, uh, backup file. So I'd go here and I go to downloads. And here's the auto backup file. And once I hit open, it would automatically upload that file, um, reset the device, and have all the information. You just need to make sure you put it on the same IP address as your old device. Uh, if not, you might need to make some configuration changes in there. Nothing major, basically just the IP address. Um, on that. So I've already got one up and running. Everything's fine. I just wanted to show you the steps and procedures to get that running as well as uh, loading the uh, exporter for Prometheus to come and scrape the information so you can get statistics and stuff like that from the system itself. Uh, that's it that I have for this. Um, that was the setup. Pretty easy, um, pretty self-explanatory, and I will have the links that you can use to install these two uh, things, the Unify controller itself, as well as the uh, exporter for Prometheus. My name is Matthew Bingham. This is MB Tech. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Thank you and have a great night.